the top 10 best royal moments of this year. Hello everyone and welcome to Royal News Network. My name is Brittany and today is one of my first wrap-up videos for 2022. Looking back over this last year and choosing what I think are the top 10 royal moments that we saw. We'll be talking about Jubilees, tiara appearances, and we'll even cover briefly the Queen's death because I think that is not only is it sad, but it was a great moment to see the transition of power occur to Charles. I think that was a fabulous and historic moment and really Really one of the best to see that seamless transition occur. And so guys, without further ado, let's get started. But if you guys haven't been here to Royal News Network before, like I said, my name is Brittany and on this channel, I provide compelling royal commentary on latest news and a little bit of gossip too. In addition, I will be reviewing television shows and movies and sharing a bit about history. I also have a royal fashion channel where I'll be going over the top 10 best and worst fashion moments of this year. And I also have a trip to the UK planned for late May. So if you guys are interested in that, link will be in the description box down below. So on to my first mention. And I will have to say, I think one of the best moments of this year was seeing the return of tiaras. Yes, we saw some in 2021, but really feel like it wasn't until 2022 that we started getting a lot more of these state visits and tiara occasions coming out, especially in the UK and other countries. So it was just lovely to see these tiaras be busted out of the vaults. And thankfully no tiaras with masks. That did happen and it was weird. So thankfully most of that has gone by the wayside now. So we've seen Queen Matilda in the tiaras again, Queen Maxima. We've also had state visit from the Netherlands to Sweden. And so we saw all the Royals ladies there wearing tiaras. We did have a wonderful occasion in Norway, which I'll cover later, which was Princess Ingrid Alexandra's 18th birthday. And there was this great state occasion. We saw three new Royal ladies in tiaras. And we also just had the return of state visits in the UK too. So we had a lot of these wonderful Royal moments where it felt like things were getting sort of back to normal. And so it was just lovely to see some of these traditional occasions come out again. And so I think one of my favorites was obviously the state visit Sweden from the Netherlands. And so King Wilhelm Alexander and Queen Maxima visited with their counterparts there and their families are quite close. So it was lovely to see Maxima in the Stuart tiara yet again. And then we had Queen Sylvia in the Brazenga tiara, which is the largest in the Swedish collection and also quite heavy. And it was really exciting to see that one come out because it's actually so heavy. She doesn't like to wear it much anymore. And we also had Crown Princess Victoria in the Amethyst tiara and she looked fabulous and I loved her dress too. And in daytime occasions, Victoria is a lot of miss, but when it comes to formal gala events, she really does knock it out of the park. Nine tenths of the time, we had Princess Sophia as well, so it was just a great occasion to see these two families meet. And I also feel like it was really cool to see Camilla bust out a new tiara after the Queen's death. I thought that was so fun to see her in the sapphire. And we did see Catherine once again in the Queen Mary's Lover's Knot, and I think probably Catherine's best tiara appearance ever. I felt like at the state dinner of South Africa, the dress and the tiara that really, really worked together. And then we saw her once again bust out the Lotus Flower Tiara for the diplomatic reception later in December. So we've been seeing a lot more tiaras and I am here for it. And speaking of that, probably the coolest event was Princess Ingrid Alexandra's 18th birthday because she wore a tiara for the first time. And it was one that was part of the family at some point and then given back to the main line. And it was one that she wore. So I had these gorgeous, massive pearls and diamonds. And she really, I feel like, pulled it off quite well. And it was pretty light too, which I feel like helps a lot. Tiaras can be quite heavy, so the lighter they are, sometimes the better you can get used to it. And then we also saw Princess Elizabeth of the Belgians. She wore a tiara for the first time and was also one her family purchased. So some families just don't have that many. Norway and Belgium are both one of them, but they just don't have a great collection. So it was lovely to see them buy one for her that she could use in the future. And then we also saw Princess Katharina Amalia from the Netherlands. She will be the future queen there as well. And she wore a tiara for the first time and it was her mother's wedding tiara. And so she got a couple to choose from, I guess, and she wanted to wear that one. So that I thought was really, really cool. And she actually got to be on the arm of King Philippe the Spain who is who is quite good looking so I feel like that was an awesome thing for her and probably the cutest moment of the whole thing was that they had this picture where they all came together so it was the three ladies and then little princess Estelle who will one day be queen of Sweden after her
her mother and little Prince Charles from Luxembourg. He was a little baby going to this royal event and he was so, so cute. And it was just so great to see four queens and a future Grand Duke together. And I think that was just such a fun picture. And it was something I wish the Brits would do more. The Brits are very insular in a lot of ways. They don't go to a lot of the, the occasions the other royal families go to. I don't know if it's because they think they're too good for it or quite what that is, but I just think it was so fun to see these families just absolutely come together for this great birthday event. And little Charles was just so cute, surrounded by all these lovely ladies. And so it was just so, so fun. And also, I just gotta say, I didn't realize this till I was covering it, the Norwegians have a birthday dance. They have a birthday dance and they go like this. <laughs> and there's like, there's like a whole song thing, a song and dance to it, which I find hysterical and like so unexpected because I was like watching them like, what are they doing? And like Crown Prince of Khan, so that's um, Ingrid Alexandra's father, he just looks super into it. And so it's just something that they, they, they do in Norway. And so it's just, I would just love to be there and have on my birthday and have somebody do the, the dance for me. I just, that would just tickle me to death. I think that would be so fun. Okay guys, number eight, for the best moment of this year is Catherine's 40th birthday. Yes, Catherine, the Princess of Wales, as she became by the end of the year, had some gorgeous 40th birthday pictures released. And these did surprise me because I was expecting something, I think more formal in a way, but I love that she had this vision and it was a bit old fashioned, really mirroring the twenties that the queen mother did, the twenties and thirties. And so she had these very ethereal pictures done. And some of them, she also looks too very, not quite as done up as she normally does. Like her hair was a bit almost like playfully messy, which I thought was fun. And so I just thought these pictures were great and just a total surprise. It's been a long time since we've gotten any sort of pictures like this from Catherine. And so I was super excited that these were the pictures she decided to release. Although I will say guys, I was disappointed that William didn't do the same. <laughs> <laughs> that he had one picture as part of a project with uh, one of the gentlemen he worked with, uh, Addie, um, who passes out these brochures or sell these brochures for those who are struggling with housing. And I, I thought it was lovely, but at the same time, I was like, oh, I wanted some more formal pictures for his birthday. So I hopefully he did take some of those, but I just thought it was great to see Catherine especially have these really magnificent pictures done that we really haven't seen of her before. I think it was really, really fabulous and a great way to commemorate her birthday. And so the other thing going back to the young royal ladies is I think number seven is that we're starting to see the future queens of their various countries doing more and more engagements with their parents and going to these bigger events. So Princess Elizabeth of the Belgians, she had her first solo engagement. She commissioned a ship and she had a little bit, the wind started being a little bit of trouble and it started raining. So I bravo to her for not really seeming to sweat any of that. But that was her first solo royal engagement. And I think we'll see Catherine Amalia out more. So she's scheduled to actually go on a tour with her parents in January to the Caribbean, the Netherlands Caribbean islands, which I'm like, oh, that sounds awesome <laughs> to leave the Netherlands, which is cold and dreary and go to the Caribbean. I don't think there's anything that sounds totally better than that. So that will be a big first for her is to go on a tour with her parents. I don't think she's really done that. The Brits do that more, I feel like, than the rest of the Royals. And so I feel like that'll be a, a super big event for her, especially because she will be doing, I'm sure, a lot of the royal engagements with her parents and maybe even a solo one as well. We also had Princess Leonor, who will be the future queen of Spain. She's 17, will be turning 18 next year. And so she has been out doing more engagements on her own as well, without her parents and then with her parents. So you can see her growing into her role as a princess of Aurelius. As part of that title, there is a foundation attached to that that her parents started. So she has been doing more speeches and engaging more on that too. So once she graduates high school, obviously she'll go to college, I imagine. And so we'll just see her continue to see her more and more. And I feel like that is really fabulous. And so, and we have Ingrid Alexandra. She hasn't really done a, a, an engagement by herself yet, but she went with her parents to a hospital for children on Christmas Eve. And so I feel like, again, we'll see her more and more as she continues to grow into her own royal role. So I feel like that is just so fun to see and just so exciting. Okay guys, so number six is little Prince Louis at the Queen's Platinum Jubilee. He stole the show, that little four-year-old. He had both a blast and just really seems to be the, the clown of the 
Cambridge at that time household. He is just so, so fun. Obviously there were some moments where he probably got a little too rambunctious and was perhaps you could say a little disrespectful to his mom, covering her mouth and everything and like, you know, making faces at her and stuff. But you also have to give Catherine mad, mad props for not reacting and just like, I mean, she, I knew she was at the world stage, but she did manage him, I thought, quite well given that. And they eventually took him down below just because he's a young kid. And honestly, the parade went on way too long because I was there. It was long. So it was just so cute, though, to see him pull funny faces. I feel like George and Charlotte have always showed a perhaps a bit more maturity. So you can really tell Louis is the baby of the family and has been very much the third child and acting out and just having fun in a way to get his parents' attention and his siblings' attention. So I feel like he very much fits the, the, the baby trope, but I think it's just really fun to see him be, even though he was rambunctious, even though he was probably a bit too much at times, but I felt like it brought such, I think, fun to the event. And I think people were just like, they just can't wait for the next time they see Louis which was at the Sandringham Walk. So I feel like that was just so, so fun. And the next thing I will say for number five is the return of the Nobel Prize ceremony. So in Sweden, every year in December, they have the Nobel Prize ceremony. So all the royals come out in their best and finest and they host all these Nobel laureates. And so it's a grand, grand event. It's a huge thing on the Swedish calendar. It happens every year, but the last couple of years we haven't seen it. And this has been, I feel like even more than state occasions, the biggest, biggest opportunity to show off their tiaras and their family jewelry. And so I feel like it was just wonderful to see them out and about again this year. I will say it was sad that Princess Madeline didn't attend. I love it when she does because she may bust out the aquamarine tiara, which I feel like is perfect for her. That one should just be set aside just for her, even though I know that's not how it works in Sweden, but she looks fabulous and it was great to see Crown Princess Victoria out again in the six buttons. We had the queen in the amethyst and then we had Princess Sophia. She really loves her wedding tiara and she gets to trade out the little jewels on top and this time she had blue topaz. The event is such a unique one to Sweden to see it once again. I feel like I was so looking forward to it. I really wanted to do a live stream. I just was unable to given that I was spending time with my family on my Royal Fashion News channel but I love the Swedish Nobel Prize ceremony, and so it's just such a fun event to have on the calendar every single year, and I love that we get to see it. I love that all the ladies brought out their best. Number four on the list is Queen Marguerite's Jubilee. So she's the Queen of Denmark, and so she fell celebrated 50 years on the throne this year. Now, I will say that unfortunately, she wasn't able to celebrate quite as much because her the queen's death overshadowed her own events, which was, I feel like, a bit of a bummer, but it was just so exciting that she was able to celebrate this monumentous occasion. Obviously, she's had a bit of struggle with her kids this year because she did decide to strip the royal titles from her younger children and said princes and princess, they will be counts and countess. So that was a bit of a kerfuffle, but when it came to her golden jubilee, they had this wonderful exhibit showing off many other jewelry. And it was also just a great time to celebrate her and just the amazing role that she's done as queen of that country for 50 years. That's a long time. And so it was just a super exciting to see, have another Jubilee in addition to the Queen's Platinum Jubilee. Yes, so number three on the list is the Queen's Platinum Jubilee. So that was celebrated 70 years on the throne. And I was there and it was fabulous. It was so fun, so hectic and chaotic, but also I would say bravo to the Brits for putting on a fabulous show. I thought especially the planes flying by was 70. I thought that was just fabulous. The weather that day was perfect. I actually got sunburned, which I wasn't expecting because usually in the UK you think, oh, cold and dreary and rainy. It was actually a really sunny day, so my face got sunburned. And it was just great to have the opportunity to be there, to see the royal family on the balcony. I got a couple pictures and just have that opportunity to be there and celebrate her was just incredible, especially considering what happened in the next couple months. And I think that was, it, it was the last time you could really see her publicly. So it was just a fabulous, fabulous moment. The crowd was so excited. There was just a lot of excitement around the royals and what was happening. So I feel like that was just such a great, great weekend. And I just had a blast and I'm, I don't know when the next Jubilee will have is because it would be 25 years and I'm just not sure Charles will make it to 25. So it might be William or even George the next time we see a Jubilee really in the UK. So that is 
really in a, many ways, especially for 70 years, that was a once in a lifetime, very, very historic moment. She's only been a, one of the handful who have ever made it to 70 years. She did not quite beat King Louis XIV of France because he became king as a child, nor did she beat out a king of Thailand, I believe but she still is one of the longest reigning monarchs in history and she is the longest reigning monarch in British history. And I feel like everybody was so excited to see her, especially with the Paddington Bear bit at the concert was just absolutely amazing. I just thought it was an incredible show. My only, my only criticism is that they had built these stages around the palace. And unfortunately, when they came out on the balcony, there were only like some little spots where you could actually see them. And I was in the mosh pit at the front at the very end and I just got a tail end of Camilla and I didn't see the rest of them. And all those British celebrities were glomming onto the side where I probably could have seen them and I was like, oh, you guys get to see them more than the rest of us. Just <laughs> like, can you move please? So yeah, it was crazy, but I was like, I won't go into a mosh pit at a concert, but hey, a royal mosh pit, I'm there, I'm there. Okay guys, so number two on the list would be Catherine and William becoming the Prince and Princess of Wales. So once the Queen's death was announced, it was a question of wondering automatically, obviously Charles becomes King, but William and Catherine, the title of Prince and Princess of Wales is something that the King or Queen designates as soon as they want to. So there could have been a, a good time period where Catherine and William were not. It could have been a couple months, a couple days, a couple years. It would, it would all be a huge question. However, Charles put that to rest very, very quickly. Just right after the Queen's death, he came out and he goes, okay, everybody, Catherine and William, they're the Prince and Princess of Wales. And I was like, yay, yay. It was just so exciting that Charles just didn't make us wait one little bit for this. He just went, set, went ahead and went, okay, Catherine and William are the Prince and Princess of Wales. So go ahead and take a listen to this br brief little clip here. Today, I am proud to create him Prince of Wales. With Catherine beside him, our new Prince and Princess of Wales will, I know, continue to inspire and lead our national conversations, helping to bring the marginal to the center ground where vital help can be given. All right, guys, that was just, I think something to just put it by the wayside and just not even, just let them be the prince and princess of Wales and move on, I thought was just fabulous of Charles to do. I felt like it really wrapped up Catherine and William's situation quite quickly and just left any lingering questions and put them aside so that everybody can focus on mourning the queen. And so I feel like the last best, and you could say both worst moment of the year as well, was watching the transition of power occur after the queen's death. And I feel like that was just such a historic moment. I actually remember waiting for the tweet and actually seeing the tweet and I got there within the first seconds or so. I'll put a post here to show you guys when I screenshot that the queen had died that on Twitter that I was one of the first to see it. So that was just a like, super sad moment. And then just watching this historic, historic moment of watching the longest reigning monarch in British history, her pass away and the baton finally go over to Charles because he has been waiting for 70 years. And it was great to see the whole UK come together to see Charles quickly become king and really just start obviously there was just a period of mourning at Balmoral with the some of the main members of the family and then we just saw the family I feel like really come together and I feel like it was very much a beautiful beautiful moment to see that there was just such an emphasis on maintaining the monarchy maintaining the dignity of her majesty and really representing and remembering her we also saw the great visual of the grandchildren so all the grandchildren of her majesty held visual much like the children do so like in so many ways for the royals to really see them come together and have this fantastic moment where they all came around Charles. There's just so much going on and you just gotta feel so much for Charles. So his mother just passed away. She lived to be in her mid nineties. So she was somebody who he spent much of his life with. She passes away rather suddenly too because the Royals, they said, William said they were not expecting it. They were still expecting her to live to much like her mother's age. And so her passing, I feel like was very much a surprise and very quick. And then Charles, he just got up. He had to do a tour around the UK and there was just so much for him to do and so you just got to feel that it was also hard for him too not to be able to mourn his mother
mother. Yeah, you saw the British people come out in force. You saw them lines going on for 24 hours for people to go and pay their respects to her coffin and just so many wonderful, wonderful moments. I think it was just such an honor for so many people to have at least seen her once maybe and just know who she was and that she was just such a fantastic representation of Britain. And I feel like it's really a torch that Charles is going to continue carrying on into his reign. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what your favorite royal moments of the year were. Were there any I missed? Were there any that you think are better? And I will have a, some top 10 royal scandals too. So be on the lookout for that, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you again really, really soon. Bye.